Hello there, I'm Mrs Lane and I'm going to be talking to you about what A-level sociology entails. So do you have an idea at present about sociology? Do you know what it is? Do you know what we study? Do you know how it's different from psychology? Lots of students often muddle them up, but they are in fact very different. Some things do cross over with each other, however, and we do research methods and that happens in sociology and psychology, but in general, they're very different subjects. The main difference between the two subjects is that psychology focuses mainly on why humans do things and the explanations for that based on their brain and their mind. What has made that person do that? Whereas in sociology, we look at human behaviour and how society influences that. So, for example, how have the people around you affected the way that you behave and how you interact with others? How has society affected how you are and what you do? And we study lots of interesting things that you perhaps never have thought about. And after you've studied the course, it will make you look at society in a whole different way. Sociology, like all A-levels, isn't an easy option. We need you to get at least a five in GCSE English. It is an all exam based subject. There is no coursework. And obviously, again, like most A-levels, it requires a lot of essay writing and a lot of theory. So we do ask that you have good essay writing skills and have a five in English to be able to access the course. For the course, you will need a textbook and we use this orange trobe textbook. It's the 2015 specification and you can order it on Amazon. This is the book that you need for the first year of the two year course. We study four main topics throughout the two years. We look at education and we look at why different groups in education do better than others and whether we think the education system is fair. We look at family and look at changes in the family over various years. So for example, how has the family developed? How has it changed? Why do we have more divorce rates now? Why are less people getting married? And we look at changes in children as well. The next topic we do in year two is crime and deviance. So we look at why certain people are do committing crimes more than others. Why are more people that are of certain ethnic minorities in prison more than they are other ethnic groups? Why is it that more men are in prison and why, why men commit more crimes? And then the fi final topic is beliefs. And in beliefs, we look at some very strange and wacky religions across the world and also look at how religion has changed and whether it is actually declining in society. So if you like investigating, finding answers and asking questions about the way that we currently live and looking at how other cultures and other societies live and comparing them, then sociology is a really good option for you. So some of the key questions that we try and find out and research into are as follows. So first of all, why at the minute are girls outperforming boys at GCSE? Why are divorce rates on the increase? Why are there more men in prison than women? Why are memberships to fundamentalist religious groups like IS on the increase? Why do Chinese pupils do so well at school? And why are more black people arrested than white? These are some of the questions that we try and find out about society and we look at particular groups and try and find patterns. Sociology is all exam based. There is no coursework. It's split into three equal size exams at the end of the two years. Each exam is two hours long and represents 33.3% of the A level. As you can see, it's also split into topics. So each exam has a different topic that we would have studied. So let's start a little bit of work. Sociologists believe that people behave as they do because they are taught how to behave and how they are taught is based on what they have in their society, whether it's their family, the education system, the criminal justice system, the media, their religions. This all affects how they behave. One of the key terms that we use in sociology is socialisation. And this doesn't mean going out and hanging out with your friends and socialising. It means how you learn how to behave, how you learn how to act with other people and what you learn from other people as well. So in other words, it's the people around you that make you who you are, 
and it's society that also affects you and makes you the person that you grow into. So if we were in class together now, we would do a small task about socialisation. And I would ask you to spend one minute thinking about the ways that society has socialised you. I'd ask you to think about what you wouldn't know if you didn't have people around you, like family, like education, like friends. What wouldn't you know? And also to think about what your family have taught you. Here are two examples to help you think. So think about what is right or wrong when you visit someone's house or when you walk down the street. What do you do when you enter somebody's house and how do you act? And the same with what you do and how you act when you walk down a street. Spend one minute to just think about this. So on the last slide, some of you might have said things like when you go around somebody's house, you take your shoes off or you ask for a drink. You don't just walk in and start raiding their cupboards, for example. The same with walking down the street. Most of you walk down the street quite timidly, maybe with your heads down in your phones. You don't walk down the street shouting and waving because otherwise people would think you're a little bit strange. But why is that? And what happens if you are not socialised and you haven't had family and friends to teach you how to act and how to behave? We use an example in sociology called the Ukrainian dog girl, Oksana Malaya. And this is an example of someone who had no socialisation growing up. She had no parents telling her right or wrong and she had no education and no socialisation from her family. She grew up with a pack of dogs and so she started acting like one. This is a prime example of what happens if you don't have society around you and it's a great example of why society is important in shaping who we all are. If we were in class together now doing this taster session, I would ask you to watch a video and we would see a very short clip about how she behaves and how she acts. So as we're not together in class, if you could Google the Ukrainian dog girl, Oksaya Malaya, and watch the short clip that comes up, I'd then like you to answer the following two questions. What do you notice about the way she's behaved? And how did her lack of socialisation affect her behaviour? Once you've got the answers to these two questions, I hope it highlights to you the importance of people around you, the importance of society, of education, of your family, of the media, of how you live, because all of that shapes the person that you are. And without it, and with a different socialisation, we have a very different outcome. So I hope that this short taster session has shown you a little bit about what sociology is, a little bit about the course and how it works, and also a little bit of a taster in what sort of work that we would do. I just want to remind you that in summary, sociology is all essay based. There is no coursework. It's a subject that requires a lot of researching and writing. You have to remember a lot of key names and key terms. It's really interesting and really engaging, and we will make you look at society in a very different way. I hope you found this useful and hopefully we'll see you studying sociology in September. <laughs>